Today I'm going to show you a couple of rotary converters. Um, rotary converters are uh, probably one of the earliest forms of rectification along with mercury arc rectifiers. Um, a lot of early electrical equipment was sort of rotary based, sort of when you're talking about 1890s. Um, you know, you get rotary transformers, boosters, and rotary converters. So here's a, an example of sort of two of them. Um, so really, what you have is a an AC motor coupled to a DC dynamo. I mean, that's pretty much it. Very basic, um, but they were kind of reliable. Probably, you know, not as well. It'd be nothing like as um, efficient or reliable as say a diode based sort of system or probably um, mercury arc rectifiers but you know very simple yeah in sort of theory um, here's one which has an induction motor made by a company called um, the Scholey Motor Company uh, Croydon um, has a nameplate on the side but I think that's the nameplate of the company that assembled the whole piece of equipment, not the individual parts. Um, and the dynamo um, has permanent magnets. Um, in there there would be a very fine coil of wire because as you can see the input voltage obviously is 230 volts AC, 50 Hz UK. But the output voltage is um, 1000 volts DC which is quite high. Uh, you can see on the end actually, if I can find my torch, I'll just show you. There's a, a familiar name, be familiar to some people, Mega. So I'm guessing Mega made the dynamo part. I mean, if, you, if you've ever seen a very early sort of hand cranked Mega volt tester, uh, it would look very similar to this inside. So I'm guessing Mega made that component. That component was obviously made by the name on the badge and the whole thing was assembled by this company. Evershed, uh, Vignoles, whatever that says. Limited London. So yeah, a thousand volts DC. Um, I mean that could have been using sort of a piece of hospital equipment or I don't know, like a piece of radio equipment or something. Something with an these cathode with high voltage, um, but it's uh, yeah, I'm guessing sort of after the First World War, maybe 1920s of that kind of date. Um, the advantage of a rotary converter over a mercury arc rectifier would have been well, maybe a couple of issues. One, the starting, you could have started it immediately. So if it was sort of like um, remotely switched. This would just start immediately. You get you get an output voltage immediately as it starts. Um, as but the with a sort of a, a mercury arc rectifier, you've got a sort of starting procedure where you have to get a, you have to establish an arc. So the advantage of a rotary converter would have been that sort of an, an immediate start for maybe a remote application where the the operator wasn't next to the machine. Here's another rotary converter. Um, same in principle, but sort of slightly different, in that it's got uh, a brushed motor, whereas the last one had a, an AC induction motor, and uh, hasn't got permanent magnets, so uh, the the windings will need exciting. Um, it's got this uh, small arm on the back to phase the the two uh, so the brush the commutator on the back of this, uh, a DC out here. And I kind of like the design of it because it's got this um, lifting eye as if it's a huge piece of industrial equipment. Where I mean, you, you can lift it up with both hands. It's got a handle on each end. So yeah, that's kind of quirky. Um, so you can, I mean, they've all the this, this one, this and the last one. They've got a a soft coupling in the middle. This is uh, I think they term it as a a donut or something. I think it's the thing it's termed as. It's a piece of leather. The other one had like kind of a flexi drive arrangement. Um, now I'm guessing the brushed AC motor was so they could vary the speed <coughs> of the AC motor to vary the voltage of the DC coming out. Uh, this is like a little panel that came with it. I mean, I don't think it's original to the machine, but I think some, it looks like someone's made it up. But uh, it's got like um, a variable rear stat here, so I'm guessing the AC. <coughs> 
AC mains coming in would have been gone th gone through this, and you could adjust the the voltage going into the brushed AC motor, which would vary the speed. And then it's got like a, like an induction coil there for the DC out. I'm guessing this is for to um, sort of like a bit of ballast to smooth any ripples in the DC. There's a fuse in there, an amp meter, and uh, sort of an old school plug for DC. Yeah, so yeah, that's a same but similar. Similar, same principle but kind of a slightly different. Right, so I've got a, an AC supply kick connected up to the motor. Uh, I've got to connect to my variac. I like seeing things in my variac because I find it a little bit safer. I can vary the voltage and sort of isolate it quite easily. So um, let's start it up. AC, AC induction motors tend to find it hard to start, so I'm going to have to give it a little bit of a spin. There it goes. Didn't seem to have any problems. kilovolt meter but it seems to be maxing it out uh, even even with the shunt on the back so I'll just demonstrate the voltage coming out at the end just by touching these wires together 